Hey guys, how's it going? It's Calvin Rabb, and a special welcome to all my biology students. So I just spent a couple hours and I went over all the jobs that bio students can get, and I sorted them down to the highest paying. Now it was a little difficult because a lot of the highest paying jobs included medical school, but I wanted to make this list specific to non-medical school related jobs. So some of these jobs do require some further education, a master's degree, a furthering doctorate degree or something like that and I'll mention what the education requirements are but this is without medical school so these are the top 10 it is in order from lowest paying to highest paying but I don't want you to skip right to the highest paying one because salary isn't the most important thing and who knows maybe somewhere along the way you'll find something that really piques your interest so without any further ado let's get into it and let's get into the 10 most likely highest paying jobs for biology students let's do it and if you're new here my name is calvin rabb i make videos all about the job market and economics so if you're interested in anything like that i would love it if you would subscribe Number 10 is a biomedical engineer, which on average is going to be making about $65,779. And one more thing on that salary, this is the average base salary, meaning the national average without any benefits or anything like that. So most likely what you're going to be taking home is going to be a lot more. So keep that in mind as I go throughout this. But a biomedical engineer, when you think of biomedical engineering, you're going to think of machines crossing over with a lot of things you learn in biology and a lot of medicine is where this domain really kind of takes off. So it's going to be all about making maybe artificial organs or something like that and incorporating a lot of the things you learn in engineering with biology. And most students, some do have biology degrees, but a lot have biological engineering degrees that is its own subset, but this is open for biology majors. So you're going to be learning not only about, you know, internal organs and machinery when it comes to that, but also creating machines that diagnose different diseases and different things like that. So you can see how this is a very much so in demand field and it is pretty high paying. Coming in at number nine, making just under $66,000 is going to be a registered nurse. And a registered nurse, they do a whole bunch and you can just simply look it up and find all the duties of it. And I can't go into all of that in this video, but when you think of a registered nurse, it's just gonna be someone who is assisting a physician in you know, helping patients, whether that be you know, just general treatment, checking progress, uh, giving different medications and different things like that you know a huge umbrella registered nurses do a whole bunch and to be an RN as far as education requirements you know there isn't you have to have a bachelor's in this oftentimes you can become an RN with only an associate's degree but you will have to go into further uh, nursing school and different things like that although there is no bachelor requirement necessarily for it there's a lot of things like a lot of people that I know that are going into nursing and RN and different things like that they go to a lot of like two year expediated vocational schools and there's a lot of different options out there for you so a lot of different paths for this but it is a very rewarding career and it does pay pretty well Coming in at number eight is a nature conservation officer. And this person will be making just over $71,000 base average salary. And when you think of nature conservation officer, it's really in the name what they do, but they are gonna be kind of protecting a lot of wildlife and water resources. And oftentimes for this job, it isn't something that you'll necessarily do remotely, although that is possible, but you'll oftentimes be living near the environment in which you are protecting. So maybe that is is a national park or maybe a private um, some sort of environmental protected area or something like that and your whole job is just to maintain not only what is there but also to protect it so you'll be enforcing laws and do everything necessary in order to protect this particular environment that you're in charge of and as far as education requirements here you can actually go for this with an associate's degree although most of the jobs that are out there job openings that i saw did require a bachelor's degree in something like bio but even i saw options like criminal justice degree and different things like that because you are going to be enforcing a lot of the laws and be well aware of a lot of the laws that are out there 
Coming in at number seven, making just over $72,000 is gonna be a medical writer. And again, this is also a very umbrella term because there's a lot of different jobs that you can get in medical writing. So this could be something like writing for a scientific magazine or just something that is more for the general audience. You know, you'll be taking what you know about bio and simplifying it down and being able to share that with a wide range of people who don't necessarily Necessarily know all the scientific backing or maybe you work for a company that sells a lot of medical products and you're writing promotional advertisements or promotional campaigns and things like that or maybe you could write for a textbook for whether it be high school or college or any other type of education like that you can see those different levels here or it could be maybe academic side of things you're writing instruction manuals or just newsletters that are going out to people within the field and there's so much here and if you are passionate about writing you can maybe find a little niche to really work on and this does vary also as far as education requirements as you can probably tell if you are writing on research or out of all involved in research or writing about it to an academic audience a lot of those people or those writers did have doctor degrees but if you're writing for a more general population oftentimes all that was needed was a bachelor's degree there was no clear-cut answer there Coming in at number six, making just over $73,000 is going to be a physical therapist. And this at the start does require a bachelor's degree, no medical school necessarily, but you will have to get further schooling, further training in order to actually open your own practice or really just start having patients or I should say clients when it comes to physical therapy. But physical therapy probably doesn't need too much of a description of what you're going to be doing here. I'm sure a lot of you guys have been involved with physical therapy. I know I certainly have been in physical therapy for just little injuries that I've had in my past, especially during my football years. I was definitely frequenting different physical therapists, but they will be helping people on their recovery from usually it's like an injury of some sort, or sometimes it's a surgery, and sometimes they work in preventative measures to keep people from getting injured. So if you're passionate about this, you can find a niche too. I know someone that is very interested in physical therapy. Uh, he currently is studying kinesiology, but he's going to go down more towards the sports pathway. He hopes to work for a sports team and kind of be a physical therapist there. So you can certainly find what you're passionate about within your kind of circle here. And this is certainly a very rewarding and it's a pretty cool job to have. A lot of physical therapists that I've met are pretty cool people. Coming in at number five, making just over $77,000 is gonna be a conservation scientist. And this one does sound very similar to the conservation officer that I talked about earlier. It does do a lot of those things. It just kind of takes it a step further in that a conservation scientist is gonna be much more active in the decision-making of what to do with specific land. So it may not be so much involved with enforcing the laws as the conservation officer is, but it's much more involved with actively making decisions of how the land should be used. So you may have to do some research in different water samples, soil samples to see, you know, what sa what soil or what the general environment has and then using that information to make decisions about okay, this is what can and can't be built on this particular part of land, how it should be used, what would be dangerous to put near the water and just being much more active about it and being running more experiments than necessarily a conservation officer would do. Although in the Venn diagram of these two jobs, there is a lot that is in the middle between the two that they're going to each share duties. But uh, from what I read, conservation scientists is much more involved with the scientific uh, measurements and testing and experiments than necessarily the conservation officer. And for conservation scientists, all that I saw in doing my research was a bachelor's degree that was all that was required. There wasn't necessarily a lot of further education, although with most of these, if you do get some type of furthering degree, a doctorate degree, master's degree, or anything like that, then you do make yourself more marketable. And a lot of these jobs, there aren't a ton of them. You know, there aren't a bunch of conservation scientists out there. So if you can make yourself more marketable, you can get a leg up on your competition for these jobs. Coming in at number four is an agricultural scientist. And this person is gonna be making just over $77,000. So an agricultural scientist is a pretty interesting job that I kind of enjoyed researching because there's so much here and this isn't really a field that I knew much about. So agricultural scientists, sometimes it's also 
referred to as just food scientist is someone who does just that is going to be really doing a lot of research on the food industry so this can start all the way back at the farm itself you know coming up with new ideas to make food more efficient safer healthier and different things like that this will require a lot of experiments on the soil you'll be looking into a lot of different chemicals that maybe you can add to the food what is safe what isn't necessarily safe where's the best place to grow and just making sure the entire industry runs as efficiently as possible because there are obviously millions of people relying their lives are relying on the efficiency of this industry to just on the consumption of food and you'll be just making sure that not only crops and different things like that but also cattle and making sure that all the cattle is done efficiently meaning it's all being fed all the proper things in order to get the best type of meat that you can possibly also make sure sure those cattle are being raised properly and there's a lot that goes here as you can tell that's just the kind of tip of the iceberg there's a lot more that goes into even the transportation side of things and there's a lot that goes into food science and it's a pretty interesting field I've done a little bit of research about it just on my own learning a lot about you know a lot of fake meat that's coming about I've really enjoyed researching things like the impossible burger and there's a lot of food scientists or agricultural scientists involved in that so it's a pretty interesting field and it could be pretty different in the future. So I'm interested to see how the food landscape changes as these type of sciences improve. So it should be interesting. Moving on to number three, and we just broke that $100,000 barrier and we went quite a bit past it. We're now at $109,000, a little bit over that, and we are now at a physician assistant. So a physician assistant, as you can probably imagine, does a lot of what a physician does. So checking up on patients, uh, giving different medical advice and different things like that. And it looks a lot like, the, as far as daily structure, a lot like a doctor or physician would. However, what is the difference between this? So a physician assistant, as you can imagine, works under a physician or works under a doctor. Well, a doctor can go out and work autonomously. These physician assistants will work under the supervision of a specific physician that they're working with and just will go to them to maybe bounce ideas off or anything like that. And as far as education requirements here, unfortunately, you can't get this with a bachelor, as you might expect, given like the importance of what you are doing and just the knowledge base that you need in order to run in this field or I should say this job really well and you will have to get at minimum a master's degree is what I saw and so you will have to go a little bit further than a bachelor's degree but there isn't necessarily all the medical school that is needed in order to become a doctor. Coming in at number two, making over $110,000 is a nurse practitioner. And a nurse practitioner, I feel like I've said this a couple times, but much like a lot of the other things that we've talked about, will look a lot like a doctor as well. So they will work oftentimes with a fairly general population, uh, diagnosing different medical issues, keeping up with treatment plans, coming up with treatment plans and recovery plans and things like that. And hearing that, you're probably like, okay, what's the difference between a physician assistant and a nurse practitioner because they do sound quite a bit alike so they do have a lot of similarities as far as a few differences between them nurse practitioners are generally more specific in that they're kind of information base or what they've learned what they've studied is much more specific whereas a physician assistant may be a little bit more general and as far as when it comes to things like surgery and different things like that that's when the physician assistant the PA is involved and the nurse practitioner is usually at the bedside during recovery coming up with recovery plans and different things like different things like that so you can tell there's little specific differences here but they will have again a lot of commonalities between them as do many of these jobs so Nurse practitioner, I do have to mention, you cannot get that with a bachelor's degree. You will have to get a master's degree or oftentimes a doctor degree, PhD, something like that in order to get properly licensed in order to be a nurse practitioner. Coming in at number one is a physician liaison. And this person is going to be making over $143,000 average base salary. So what a physician liaison does is it's all about 
really communication and networking. So this person is in charge of creating connections between different doctors and different entities within the hospital. So oftentimes a lot of doctors may work autonomously and individually and what the liaison does, as is in the name liaison, is going to be someone that connects them. So maybe creating something like a network of referrals, letting this doctor know that, hey, if you have patients, this is someone else who could be helpful and just creating the connections not only within the hospital but with patients in general so they will also be very much so client focused in different referrals and recommendations and this person's whole job is really to grow the business of the hospital a lot of the previous jobs that i talked about were very much so specific in the medical field. This is without a doubt in the medical field, but it's also in the business field as well. I know you could argue that those are kind of the same thing, but this person has much more business mind. In fact, a lot of the different job requirements that I saw for this, a lot of people didn't necessarily have a medical background in biology or a furthering degree in medicine, but a lot of them had business degrees. So it's kind of interesting there. I should touch on education requirements this one from what I saw as far as requirements you do need a bachelor's degree it could be in something like bio or it could be in something like business as well and to make yourself more marketable sometimes further degrees are recommended and a background within this is always helpful as well but that's what this person is going to do it is kind of creating connections so you're going to be want to be very much so people friendly being able to talk to people and recommend people you want to be very trusting and understanding and patient and you can see that it's a very important job because this is what grows the hospital. This is what grows the business of the hospital by creating connections not only between doctors but of a lot of just clients and people within the general vicinity to let them know and just connecting people. That, that's what you're doing. You are an expert networker and that is also kind of scratching the surface. There's a lot more that this liaison is going to do but that is just kind of a head start. If you're interested you can always do a little bit more research on it. All right, so that will wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed those 10 jobs for biology majors, and I tried to stick to the highest paying jobs as well. But if you guys are bio majors, you probably know a lot more than I do about different job prospects and anything and different things like that. So I would love it if you would let me know in the comments below any other recommendation you have for your fellow bio majors, future bio majors, or anything like that. So just let me know down there. I'll be looking through there. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you found this video helpful in any way, I would love it if you would give it a like and I would love it even more if you would subscribe. And if you like the video, that just lets me know that you're interested in this and I'll make more videos like it. So that will wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb and I'll see you soon. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. So I'm going to move to the corner of your screen here. If you look in the upper left hand corner, you are going to see my most recent video. And if you look in the lower left hand corner, you are going to see a video that YouTube and I each think that you would like. And if you haven't yet, you can hit my face right here and subscribe. As always, my name is Calvin Rabb, and I'll see you soon.